So, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So today, we're going to explore the fascinating world of testosterone replacement therapy, also known as TRT. Specifically, we're going to examine what finasteride users who are considering TRT should know before they start treatment. Is TRT safe with finasteride? Will it cause hair loss? Are there certain androgenic compounds that finasteride users should avoid while they're on treatment? We're going to go balls deep on all that chooms, I promise. But before we do, let's briefly examine what TRT actually is. TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, is a pretty self-explanatory term. You're using a source of exogenous androgens, usually injectable testosterone, to treat hypogonadism, which is a condition that causes low testosterone levels. This is done because having low testosterone levels can cause a whole lot of health problems, like muscle wasting, depression, sexual dysfunction, osteoporosis, and there are many others as well, of course. Ironically enough, even testosterone supplementation by itself can cause hypogonadism, since exogenous testosterone can shut down the physiological pathways the body uses to create testosterone and therefore effectively suppress natural testosterone production. That's because the production of testosterone is controlled by a feedback mechanism that involves the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Indeed, testosterone is not a trash hormone. It is the main male hormone, and whatever health risks may be associated from exogenous testosterone supplementation are far outweighed by the severe detrimental effects of having low testosterone levels. So TRT is very important for the health and longevity of many men. Testosterone is also given to female to male trans men in order to assist with their virilization, and it is also sometimes given to cisgendered women in very small quantities to treat symptoms of low libido. In recent years, however, there has been a huge push to promote TRT for a lot of men who really don't need it, but who want to use testosterone anyways for its ergogenic benefits in building muscle, improving libido, and improving sports performance. So, a lot of shady, gray market TRT clinics have been popping up next to your local Applebee's and Kroger grocery stores that are willing to provide testosterone to patients who do little more than just answer a few basic questions before they're given a prescription for testosterone. The popularity has even extended to telehealth companies where online doctors will write a prescription for testosterone, oftentimes without even meeting with their patient at all, which is really pretty remarkable if you think about it, especially considering testosterone is a Schedule 3 controlled substance in the United States. Personal Personally speaking though, I don't care. Even though I lean to the left politically, I am libertarian on the subject of drugs, and I think steroids should be legal, even for sports performance, and that's just so long as it is under a doctor's supervision and documented so that natural athletes don't face any unfair competition. But let me be clear. There are men that are truly hypogonadal due to various medical problems, and these men have dangerously low levels of testosterone. These men are definitely candidates for TRT, which in this case is just replacing their lack of endogenous testosterone with exogenous testosterone. The goal in these men is to achieve normal testosterone levels and normal virility as well. There's no more risk to TRT in these men than there is from the normal testosterone levels that exist in men who aren't hypogonadal. However, there are also men who use testosterone as a performance enhancing supplement in order to boost their libido or build up their muscle or improve their sports performance. Super physiological androgen levels definitely can help build muscle or boost sexual drive or athletic performance, but these high androgen levels can lead to all sorts of medical problems as well. But being that I am a hair loss witcher, I don't want to go too into depth on the risks that performance enhancing steroids pose to the liver or the heart. All that is already well documented, but I do want to explore what effects steroids can have on hair loss and also what happens if if you combine steroids with a 5-air inhibiting drug like finasteride or dutasteride. Now, first of all, let's make one thing perfectly clear. Testosterone itself does not cause hair loss. This is a pretty common myth that I myself used to believe a long time ago, but it isn't true, and I made a video discussing it in depth. What does cause hair loss is the trash hormone DHT. It's not testosterone. Contrary to popular belief, DHT is not just some stronger form of testosterone. Even though both testosterone and DHT interact with the same androgen receptor, each hormone causes different conformational changes in the receptor that end up activating different protein synthesis in the nuclei of the cells. That explains why lowering DHT with finasteride or dutasteride causes hair growth, even though both drugs also increase serum testosterone levels by 10% or even more than that. Testosterone can, however, indirectly cause hair loss if it is allowed to be converted by the 5-air enzyme into DHT. But just so long as the 5-air enzyme is suppressed adequately, 
Secondly, testosterone levels shouldn't cause any problems for the hair, even if the testosterone is being used exogenously as opposed to being produced endogenously. PRT that is used appropriately in hypogonadal men isn't meant to boost testosterone levels to super physiological levels. It's just meant to get testosterone levels back to normal. So someone who uses TRT to restore normal testosterone levels, they should have no problem at all keeping their hair loss under control just so long as they're using a 5-air inhibiting drug like finasteride or dutasteride. But can the same thing be said for people who use supplemental testosterone to achieve super physiological levels of testosterone for the sake of performance enhancement? Well, hair loss witchers, let's go balls deep and find out. Hopefully we won't hurt our own balls in the process. Hey, be careful, man. I heard that stuff does funny things to your balls. But before we start, let's address the elephant in the room. That elephant is the fact that there are a huge number of synthetic anabolic and androgenic steroids that people use, sometimes legitimately for TRT, but more often for performance enhancement purposes. It turns out that you can take the basic testosterone molecule that you see here and then apply an almost infinite combination of chemical reactions in order to create synthetic androgens that in many cases are even more potent than testosterone or even DHT. That's why there are so many different types of steroids, including designer steroids that are often on the market as dietary supplements, but then quickly get pulled off the market by the FDA. Superdrol, also known as methasterone, is an example of such a designer steroid. So due to their popularity in the sports and bodybuilding scenes, there are a whole lot of different synthetic androgenic steroids available that are derived from testosterone. You can see that in this figure here, which is just a partial list since it's from 2008, and I know that there have been many many others that have been created since then. In fact, there are literally hundreds of compounds, either naturally occurring ones or synthetic ones that have androgenic activity. It turns out that these synthetic androgens have different properties than testosterone or DHT. The molecules can have stronger binding and weaker unbinding characteristics to the androgen receptor, which makes them more potent androgens than testosterone. They also could be metabolized differently from natural androgens and have different metabolites that can also have androgenic properties. Some of them are metabolized metabolized similarly to testosterone, meaning that they can be converted by the 5-air enzyme into DHT or molecules that are similar to DHT and by the aromatase enzyme into estrogenic molecules. So that's why when people use androgens for performance enhancement purposes, they often have to use an aromatase inhibitor like arimidix or letrozole in order to prevent the excessive estrogen buildup that will happen as a result of the aromatization. But unfortunately, aromatase inhibitors themselves have a long list of side effects, including hair loss and we'll get into more of that soon, a little bit later in the video, but for now, let's get back to the subject of steroids. So, although some steroids are synthetic derivatives of testosterone, some others are derivatives of DHT, like mesterolone, also known as proviron, for example. The advantage of a DHT-derived steroid is that it can't be metabolized into estrogen by the aromatase enzyme, but the big downside is that it also can't be metabolized by the 5-AR enzyme. So, taking finasteride would have no effect on the metabolism of these androgenic steroids, and since they are derived from DHT, they are going to be extremely toxic to your hair and promote hair loss. However, even though the 5-AR enzyme converts testosterone into DHT, which is a stronger androgen than testosterone, with synthetic steroids, sometimes the 5-AR enzyme will actually convert the steroid into a weaker androgen. A classic example of this is nandrolone, also known as 19-nortestosterone, or dica durabolin. Nandrolone is metabolized by the 5-AR enzyme, However, the resulting metabolite is something called 5-alpha-dihydro-19-nortestosterone, which is a much weaker androgen than nandrolone. The result is that nandrolone is quickly inactivated in tissues with a lot of the 5-AR enzyme, like the prostate, the skin, and of course the hair follicles. Nandrolone should have a lower risk of hair loss than other steroids. However, in skeletal muscle, which has no 5-AR enzyme activity, nandrolone is not inactivated, so therefore it has an augmented effect on skeletal muscle tissue, which is why it's so effective. However, if you really think about it, if you are taking nandrolone and finasteride together, nandrolone will not be inactivated in the hair follicles, and so therefore, nandrolone levels will build up in the hair follicles and thus cause hair loss. So taking finasteride alongside with nandrolone can actually make hair loss worse. This is not just a theoretical concern either, as there is evidence that taking finasteride along with nandrolone actually worsens the cardiovascular side effects of nandrolone because finasteride interferes with its metabolism. Now, 
You may think that since nandrolone is only bad for the hair if you suppress the 5-year enzyme, then why not do a cycle of nandrolone by itself without finasteride? Well, in theory, nandrolone by itself might be hair safe, but nandrolone is also one of the most suppressive steroids on the market. Not only does nandrolone suppress the feedback loop between the testicles, the hypothalamus, and pituitary glands, it also seems to directly suppress testosterone biosynthesis. In addition, nandrolone has central nervous system effects that could affect the sex drive adversely. So if you take nandrolone without also taking testosterone, then you're probably going to have no sex drive. Have you ever heard of Dekadic? It's a real thing, Chooms, and it's definitely not something you want to deal with at all. So if you take nandrolone with finasteride, it will make your hair loss worse. But if you take nandrolone with testosterone but aren't using finasteride, then the testosterone will convert into DHT, and that will make your hair loss worse. And if you're taking nandrolone without testosterone, you'll get Dekadec. So if you're a hair loss sufferer, there is no practical way to use Dekadurable and also known as nandrolone. You're either going to go bald or you're going to get Dekadec. So the best thing to do is just to avoid nandrolone altogether. And I'll get into that a bit later, but the point I'm trying to make here is that all these anabolic steroids have different effects, and since most of these drugs are not even legal drugs to begin with, most of them have not been well studied at all. But what we do know about them is that they cause a whole slew of side effects, and those side effects definitely include hair loss. Also, in most cases, the response to 5-air inhibitors isn't really well established. Oftentimes, 5-air inhibitors will be ineffective, or like in the case of nandrolone, they could make hair loss and other side effects worse. Now, I know some people have claimed that Anivar, also known as Oxandrolone, is a hair-safe steroid, but there is no good evidence to back this up at all. Anivar is a DHT-based steroid, after all, and even if it were true that Anivar is hair-safe, it is very important to realize that Anivar is very commonly faked, especially since it is expensive, and the FDA withdrew its approval of Anivar in 2023. So any Anivar you see on the market is strictly a black market product, and there is a very good chance that what you are buying is either fake or another steroid like Winstrol that is being sold as Anivar, especially since there is still a lot of demand for Anivar, especially amongst female athletes and bodybuilders where it remains popular. So. Look, Chums, I definitely can understand the temptation to use anabolic steroids. They're basically like real-life cheat codes, and I have definitely been tempted to use them many times in the past. But as tempting as it may be to take shortcuts with these drugs, I don't recommend that anybody even consider taking any of these synthetic androgenic steroids for any reason, especially if you have hair loss. It just isn't worth the risk, Chums. Muscle will never compensate for hair, and you don't need drugs to build a decent physique. If you go bald and then try to compensate for it by juicing, then you're just going to end up looking like a thug. Sure, you'll look intimidating, you'll look scary, but you won't look attractive, and that's far more important to most men, I imagine. Also, I don't know if there's ever been a scientific explanation for this, but I have noticed that a lot of steroid users just look flat out bad. I'm not talking about just how steroids cause hair loss, but rather it's just their faces themselves that look terrible. I mean, there are exceptions, of course. I mean, I think everybody would agree that Michael Hearn looks great for his age, but most steroid users I see look significantly older than they really are. Now, I don't want to drop too many names because I don't want to come across as a bully, but just look at someone like Ryan Humiston. I am about eight years older than this guy. He was in elementary school during my senior year of high school, and this is honestly how most steroid users look to me. They look tough. They look masculine. They definitely don't look like people I'd want to mess with, but they still don't look good. And to me, looking good is far more important than looking tough. Regardless, though, I think people should be free to do what they want with their own bodies. And if people want to use steroids, then I am perfectly fine with that. However, if you care about your hair but want to use steroids, whether it be for TRT or for sports performance, then the only steroid you should even consider is testosterone, because at least with testosterone, we have a good knowledge of its effects. We also know that giving finasteride or dutasteride along with testosterone will block its conversion to the trash hormone of THT and prevent hair loss. In addition to that, we also know from clinical research that adding a 5-air inhibitor to TRT does not affect body composition or gains in muscle strength. That's because DHT is not necessary for muscle strength at all, and I talk about all that more in my 
DHT as a trash hormone part six video, which is linked below. Now, even though a lot of steroid users successfully protect their hair with a 5-air inhibiting drug, there is the issue of aromatase inhibitors. For performance enhancement purposes, but not for TRT, aromatase inhibitors are pretty much essential since the extra testosterone will undoubtedly aromatize into estrogen and increase the chance of causing unwanted side effects like erectile dysfunction and gynecomastia. Unfortunately, aromatase inhibitors can also cause hair loss. This is most commonly seen in women who use them to treat breast cancer, but it can occur in men too. The mechanism is probably just the decrease in estrogen levels since estrogen stimulates hair growth. Now, this isn't guaranteed to happen, of course, but the risk is still there. So, to summarize all of this, if you are hypogonadal and using testosterone for TRT, then you can just use finasteride or dutasteride to prevent the conversion of testosterone into the trash hormone DHT, and this will save your hair. Your protocol should be no different than someone taking finasteride with normal levels of testosterone. If you are using supplemental testosterone for strength gains, the same thing is true. Just so long as the 5-air enzyme is under control, you needn't worry about hair loss, and there are plenty of bodybuilders out there who use steroids and don't experience any hair loss because they take finasteride. How However, with higher doses of testosterone, it is possible that you may need more 5-air inhibition. That means if you're a finasteride peasant, for instance, then you may need to join the dutasteride master race and take 0.5 milligrams per day of dutasteride. Or if you want to be really safe, then you can even join the dutasteride exalted race and take 2.5 milligrams per day to suppress the maximal amount of scalp DHT possible. You don't have to switch things up permanently, of course. You can go back to what you were using before once you finish the cycle. My advice is that if you do use steroids and you notice that your hair loss starts to accelerate, then don't push through it. Get off the steroids and get on post-cycle therapy, also known as PCT, right away. Maybe you can plan for a cycle in the future with a stronger 5-air inhibiting drug, but don't push yourself through the cycle or you may be risking permanent damage to your hair follicles. Now, I'm not going to go over what post-cycle therapy or PCT is, as I definitely don't want my channel to become yet another steroid channel. YouTube already has enough of those already. And and honestly, this is why I wish steroids were legal so that people who want to use them would get advice from actual doctors rather than bro scientists online. And on that note, I'd like to kindly request that nobody ask me for any specific guidelines on proper dosings for steroid use or what compounds to use to support a steroid cycle. I mean, I have nothing against anyone doing that, of course, but I don't want my channel to have anything to do with that, and it's already easy enough to find information on that subject elsewhere. However, I will say that if you do decide to use synthetic androgenic steroids, the only compound that you should even consider is testosterone alone. You should do a testosterone-only cycle with no other compounds. If you use any other compound besides testosterone, then you are risking your hair as well as your health. Furthermore, even though we know 5-air inhibitors will work with testosterone itself, it is not clear that 5-air blockers will save your hair if you are using any of these other steroid derivatives, and they could even make your hair loss worse. So it's just not worth it, Jones. Plus. It's important to remember that steroids are black market products and trying to acquire them can get you into legal trouble as well. So testosterone is definitely the safest choice for anyone going on TRT. You're taking a compound that is bioidentical to the testosterone your body produces naturally and because of that you can add a 5-air blocker to stop hair loss. And if you're taking it for performance enhancement purposes, don't worry. Testosterone is a very, very powerful substance and will easily help you break past any plateau you may be experiencing in in the gym. You don't need to add any shit like Trenbolone or Dika, especially if you're a beginner. Frankly, if you're not able to make gains or break past the plateau on testosterone or on a testosterone-only cycle, then there's obviously something wrong with your training program and your diet, and you probably need to take a step back and look at what you're doing wrong there before you consider making any modifications to your drug stack. So, is there a hair-safe steroid? Yes, there is. It is testosterone combined with a 5-air inhibitor. That is the only steroid a hair loss sufferer should even consider. Everything else should be avoided by anyone who values their hair. Okay, thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. I will see you all next time. God bless.